Hello, my Soccer Universe. For a review of Match Day 2 in the UEFA Conference League this season, the league phase of Match Day 2, I have to say, gave us a few upsets. I'm looking at Viking Group beating Circle Bruges 3 1 at home. Yes, this might not be on everyone's radar, but to me, this is a huge upset. We also Celia beating Bajakshi here 5 1. That is a result that I did not see coming, did not bode well. And unfortunately, the other Slovenian team, Ljubljana, also got a 2 0 win over my dear Lusk. Mm, it was a very sobering evening. Talk about that a little bit later. Rapid at least got a narrow win, but I'm getting more and more the feeling that European competition is really hard for Austrian teams as of late, and we're gonna drop further in the standings because you need to have at least two teams that get the points we have Sturm Graz and Salzburg in the Champions League they will not get a lot of points so it's all down to Rapid and Lusk and let's face it Lusk is not good enough at the moment for that which hurts to say because the last time we were in the Conference League I think it was three years ago we actually did really well there yes we had a very nice group as well to get a lot of points but still I would expect more from my team, especially against opponents like Ljubljana. However, they showed that they were just a tad better. And that is damning. Even Deer Gardens is a team that I would say three to four years ago we would have blown out of the stadium. And it does not bode well for the rest of the competition. I don't really see where the points really will be coming. Although we are still very much in contention to get into the next phase. That should be a minimum goal. However, I think the potential would be there to do more. On the other side, you have to get it onto the pitch. And that is not happening. And it also doesn't bode well overall for the Austrian Bundesliga, who I said is losing ground. And I'm really wondering at this moment why this might be. I mean, definitely Salzburg losing their mojo has something to do with it. But that might be something I have to talk about in an Austrian Bundesliga video. On the other side, Chelsea is toying with the competition. I mean, going to Panathinaikos and getting such an easy win in a horrible jersey matchup, though, that I did not expect. I at least expect a little bit more fight out of the Greek side or at least to be a little bit more level but Chelsea was towing Fiorentina in the end also got the job done Bet is the other big team in there they are still reeling they have only a single point like Lusk and that's interesting where this might go so as always here are my thoughts on Lusk and then a few highlight games from the leagues that I'm mostly looking into and a few more in there as well you see also the standings during those results and then We'll talk about projections going forward and the next match day. It was a very disappointing night for Lusk in Ljubljana, losing 2-0. A result that I didn't really see coming. However, the signs were there that this will be a tough opponent. A, they did actually quite well against Heidenheim, although Heidenheim did outplay them most of the time, but they held their own. They have a Spanish coach. They have two Austrian players in there. They're a little bit undervalued here in the league as well. And then when I saw that Celia a team that is, I think, five points behind in the Slovenian league, behind Ljubljana, beating Bajakshi at home 5-1. Ooh, this is going to be a tough one. Now, when I look at the game, yes, opening exchanges, you saw that Ljubljana is really dangerous on the counter-attack. However, you just started to gain control and you created a chance however, from that first chance. It was really badly played and that kept Bello all the way up. There was a goal kick and it allowed Ljubljana to launch a counter-attack, it goes to Florus, one of those Austrian players, he was even the Lask Academy, he's from Upper Austria, of Romanian descent, and he finds Blanco on the other side really free, because Bello is up, because he was pressing, and admittedly it was a great finish, 1-0 for Ljubljana, and that already pointed very much towards them winning, because the pitch is awful in Ljubljana, and if you need to make the game, that doesn't really help. There was, though, a really great chance to equalize when a header from Schul was just cleared by the goalie somehow and then Taui for whatever reason kind of put it on goal. And at that moment you already escaped Ljubljana hitting the post as well and while the stats show that Lask had more chances I always felt that the better and more dangerous chances fell to Ljubljana. In the second half Lask brought on more or less the cavalry to change games and yes you have a deeper bench I would argue. How you failed to create anything that is tangible. The biggest chance was a potential penalty call where the ball goes from the goalie to the defender right there, which, yeah, 
I can see it being given. I wanted it being seen given, but if I look at it from a different perspective, I'm saying that it's not a penalty. And it was not a penalty. And then, yes, Kifi, <laughs> we had referee Kifi, who just botched the Milan Udinese game, didn't do that badly overall. However, he gave a free kick where there was no foul by Boateng whatsoever. It's a free kick in. Ristic takes a shot and Pera Lucas lost it off into the net 2 0. And then you had to be lucky that it's not 3 0 because they hit the crossbar again. Very, very sobering evening. You're now one point after two games, still all the play for however now you're towards the bottom of the table you need to get at least two more wins and when I look at those Anja Luka potentially but this is gonna be a rough one you have Serkli Bruges which I really don't fancy us getting much there maybe a point out of there Fiorentina away no and then you need to be Wikingur at home which on paper should be easy however they just beat Serkli Bruges 3-1 at home. So this might also be a tougher side than one would expect. This conference league, unfortunately, is proving to be a challenge for Lusk, which sounds a little bit odd. Well, Rapid is the only Austrian Bundesliga team that got a win in this week. Actually, the only one that got points. They beat Noah from Armenia. A much tougher opponent than they would have expected through a Belly goal in the 31st minute. Was relatively easy. Belly probably should have made it too. This was hard work, but the three points are with Rapid, who are now in a really good position of advancing, even among the top eight. A rather remarkable result happened already early on Thursday when Vicky Gull, Iceland's champion, beat Circle Bruges 3-1 at home, coming back from a 1-0 deficit. They even missed a penalty just before the halftime break. It's two late goals by Juric and Wattenheimer that secured the win. After drawing to Lusk away from home, this time Jürgen take on at home Vittoria de Guimaraes from Portugal, of course, losing 2-1. Yes, they got the equalizer from Stenson, but Manu and Santos gave Guimaraes the overall deserved win. It's a very much overlooked tie on Thursday, but I think it features two of the stronger teams in this competition. Ghent taking on Molde and Ghent winning 2-1 through a stoppage time goal by Brown after Molde had fought back to get an equalizer through Daly. Meanwhile, slightly disappointingly, Chelsea get a very easy 4-1 win at Panathinaikos. Panathinaikos had an early chance. However, Joao Felicia in 22nd minute scores for Chelsea. Probably should have had a second one as well. The goal staying came in quick succession in the second half. Mudrik Joao Felicia and Kunku with a penalty at three more just before the hour mark before Pelistri pulls one back for Pana. Meanwhile, Fiorentina had to fight much harder in San Garin. They were down at the half through Mubimbi goal. However, then the goals came very quickly after the halftime break in a 10 minute window. First, Fiorentina turned it around through Martinez Garta and Ikone. Then Gartler equalizes for San Garin, but in the 69th minute, Ikone re establishes the lead that is then brought home by Golsons in stoppage time. In a duel of two esteemed teams, however, First match they lose us, Betis and Copenhagen only play out a 1 1 draw. Betis took an early through Esoli, had plenty of chances to double that one, and in the end, it's a Dix penalty that gives Copenhagen potentially a slightly lucky point. And Heidenheim also get a second win in the second ever European game. Mike is scoring the winner at Paphos on Cyprus. Watch out for Heidenheim. I think they could go deep. I might get a jersey of theirs. Let's see. Well, look now at the expected standings, which means that I'm also projecting the results for the next four games. The two presumptive finalists, and I think those two are the strongest teams in the competition, Chelsea and Fiorentina, are, of course, on top. However, Rapid is already in third place, which seems mad a little bit. But, you know, I think that Rapid is really good this season. They might not push for a championship, but they might go on a run in Europe. However, then we look at other teams. Real Betis is only in 11th. They are losing ground. Whereas Heidenheim also, 6th place there behind Vittorio de Gimenez and Legia Varso. Legia might be a team that we are overlooking quite some, as we do with Jagiel Lenia Bialystok, the Polish champions, who actually got already a win at Copenhagen. So... I would watch out for the Polish teams. They might be on the overtaking track for a few leagues in there as well. A notable team in Copenhagen, only in 19th place, projected for now, shows that they did not have a really good run so far in this competition. And then last sitting only in 25th. This is not the place that I would expect them to be, but you know, maybe, maybe they can get their act together. But there are quite a few teams that they will be facing that are ahead of them. And that actually means that you gotta get points against these 
guys. As for the overall chances of winning this competition, of course, it's Chelsea, 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 Chelsea. And if, if Chelsea should trip up, even with a secondary squad, then I think Fiorentina will swoop in and finally get the trophy that they were so close to winning twice in a row. I would love to see Fiorentina win this trophy. However, I see them again as losing finalists. Betty is still in third place, but you see it's getting a little bit iffier for them. I think Heidenheim. <laughs> Watch out for this Heidenheim. I actually really like their chances. And then you see other teams in there. Oh, Lask still sitting in 16th spot. Hmm, maybe there's a little, little, little chance. Well, it's at least 58% to qualify for the next round. So I'm still having my hopes high, but you know. Upcoming matches. I mean, of course, Lask against Sackley Bruges is the one that I'll be focusing on. I am toying with the idea of going to that game, although the ticket prices are really high. But, you know, I should at least go to one European game and that's the one that looks kind of most interesting. Let's see about that. As for other games, there are two Lask opponents playing also in Viking Group against Borat Spania Luka. Interesting one for me as well. We have Chelsea taking on Noah, who were just... Barely beaten by Rapid 1-0 with Betis against Selye. I think that's one to watch out because Selye were really good against Bajakshi here. Jagiellonia against Molde might be a sleeper tie. I would say Fiorentina have to go to Apoel, also an interesting one, and Heidenheim have to go to Hearts. That might be the pick of the bunch. I also look at Jurgens against Panathinaikos as a potentially interesting one. And I definitely shouldn't forget that Rapid have to go to Petro Club, the Moldovian champions. And I think this could be a rougher opponent than many would think. Well, that was my little summary of the Conference League evening yesterday. One thing I noticed and that I haven't mentioned, there are many teams that play majority green in there, which fits great with the Conference League branding. However, I find this rather curious. You see it even here in the background. Of the six teams that I have, three are in green. What's happening? Did UEFA twist a few knobs there to have this happening? Just a thought. Any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. I'll talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!